A boy had a sore throat. This is how he became unable to use his legs. Hi, it's Dr. Derek here with another story of a puzzling medical diagnosis. This time in a young boy who had just gotten over a fever. Let's dive straight in. Our story is about a seven-year-old boy who we'll called him Ethan. Ethan and his family arrive at the hospital one evening. The young boy has been complaining of these severe headaches. He also has some vomiting, a fever, and a mysterious pain that seemed to target both his legs. Now, the curious thing was that just a couple of weeks ago, Ethan had just seemed to bounce back from a minor cold. Though he had a high temperature and sore throat, it seemed unrelated to what he was going through, and he also recovered with just home treatment. So, when Ethan was seen by the doctors, his initial checkup painted a picture of a relatively healthy boy. All of his observations were stable at that time and he seemed perfectly aware of his body and surroundings. Now, as the doctors then began to delve deeper, certain signs began to emerge. For instance, Ethan's knees refused to straighten. Now, to make matters worse, the young boy's walk seemed to have transformed into this kind of cautious shuffle and he had a lot of neck stiffness. Now, these symptoms were not only confusing, but they were clearly troubling. So the medical team then decided to order several investigations for the young boy. These included a brain scan, lumbar punctures, and sewing different type of blood tests. But each one came back perfectly normal. All of the usual suspects from infections to inflammation, these were all ruled out. Yet Ethan's condition continues to deteriorate, his body seemingly growing weaker and weaker by the day. Now things then got worse. Initially, the doctors thought that Ethan might have been facing a severe infection in the brain, something that we call meningitis. And this was thought because he had these symptoms such as neck stiffness, the bad headache and vomiting. So the doctors then put him on some powerful antibiotics, hoping to initiate a swift recovery. But as the days passed, the expected improvement did not occur. Ethan's movement worsens to the point that he can barely walk. He not only claims that his legs are filled with so much pain, but also that his muscles are too weak to support him. At this point, the doctors begin to suspect infectious myositis. This is an inflammation of the muscles. But further tests also rule out this theory. Now, given the situation, the medical team had to start considering every possible cause, including the possibility that there were no symptoms at all. Indeed, Further question indicated that Ethan was navigating a very difficult home environment where both parents were constantly arguing. Could the stress and emotional strain be manifesting physically in Ethan's body? Well, while the link between the mind and body is profound, the nature of Ethan's symptoms was too consistent and too obvious for them to be purely psychosomatic. The turning points in Ethan's story finally came when the doctors decided to perform a second analysis of his cerebrospinal fluid. This uncovered a dramatic clue that had previously eluded detection. This was a significant increase in protein levels. Now, this is a red flag for Guillain-Barre syndrome. This rare autoimmune disorder where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its nerves seemed to account for all of the bizarre symptoms. When she was asked if Ethan had recently suffered a viral infection, his mother finally remembered the illness from several weeks before. Ethan's preceding symptoms, seemingly harmless as they were, were likely the trigger for this autoimmune onslaught. His body, trying to fight off the original illness, accidentally started attacking its own nerves. Guillain-Barre syndrome typically occurs within two to three weeks of an infection and patients generally suffer from a lack of reflexes and localized weakness, just like Ethan. In kids like Ethan, Guillain-Barre syndrome can be especially sneaky. This is because it can cause a lot of pain in the muscles or nerves, which can distract from other signs, like an inability to move parts of the body. And because younger children might not be able to explain what they're feeling very well, the doctors are left trying to solve a puzzle without all of the pieces. After two weeks in the hospital, Ethan's situation finally began to improve. His pain wasn't as bad anymore and he was getting stronger by the day. He also needed some help from the physiotherapy team. 
in order to continue his rehabilitation. I hope you enjoyed today's video in which you've taken a look at another puzzling medical history. As always, please leave a like and subscribe as that really helps this channel out. And remember, I truly care about your health and I wish you the very best.